Hello everybody and welcome to the latest episode in Jurassic World Evolution 2 where today we are going to be continuing our coverage for Update 7 and the DLC. In the last video we covered the DLC with the Archelon, the Dunkelosius, the Shonisaurus, and the Nothosaurus, which looks like all the Nothosaurus are dead. Also, um, I don't know if I got this in the video last time, but, um, Mosasaurus, um, it says starved to death, but actually, it got, um, obliterated by one of the Shonisaurus, um, actually. He got it to 5%, and because he was hungry, he died, like, in a minute later. So... Yeah, Shonisaurus can attack the Mosasaurus as well, so in case I forgot to show that, um, just wanted to let you know. But today we're not covering the DLC, the paid-for stuff. No, today we're going to be covering all the free goodies that we can, at least in this video. So, let's get underway. But before we begin, guys, I do want to um, discuss a latest update for the channel, and that is that we have created a Patreon for the channel. This will help support me and the channel going on in the future. So for those who have subscribed but wish to just um, help out a little bit more, link will be in the description. And for now, there's only one little reward set up for the moment, but there will be some more added in the future. Just wanted to let you guys know because, well, I... I just really hope that you guys can support if you can. Don't feel like you need to have to. It's only for those who wish to as well. And it's not that expensive. So just to let you know. But now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the video. Okay, so guys, now that we've gone over that, let's get into it. Which, first thing, we'll need to stick with the Lagoons. Because the first free thing to join the game for the updates is actually the newest viewing ability for the game, and that is the Lagoon Viewing Dome. Along with, in the previous update, we got the the Viewing Dome and the Viewing Log, which, while the log could only go into enclosures and the um, dome could only go into aviaries and enclosures, we never got anything for the Lagoons. But, as we got this... Um, Marine DLC, I guess they felt it was fair for us to get a little bit of something. And they gave us this. We now have a lagoon viewing thing. And also, you can attach it directly to your lagoon if you want. Well, not actually, as you can see. There's quite a bit of a gap. Or you can just snap it to the path or anything. And there is, like, a certain, like, distance before it's like, nope, I can't go any further. Like, that's as far as it goes for this. But... We'll just unplug it in, and we'll take a look and see how it is. Which, it is not too shabby at all. You can see up into the enclosure, and also I have checked, everything can swim over this. Even like a Mosasaurus if I want to. Or in this case, a beautiful Archelon. And you can switch the camera so you can get other views. Oh, we just missed an animation. Get some lovely fishes. Also, um, this post is uh, glitching out a bit, so they got some bug fixes that they've got to work on, but you know what? This is very nice, and also let's see how it looks on the outside. Hold on, let me just get into capture mode. It'd be much easier for me then. Which, ho 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 ho, hot dog, that just looks so cool. Just, it is nice to just have stuff. Like, I wish we got more for, like, foliage or stuff for the enclosures, because we didn't get really anything... For that for the lagoons in this update so for anyone who was hoping for a kelp forest unfortunately we're not there yet but this is a nice start and such and you know we'll probably get more in the future but it i was hoping for a little bit more but this is really nice like this just looks so cool plus along with these which are for the paid part of the dlc and such so that's why i'm not showing those off too much although it is weird that that one is um, glitched out, unlike its neighbors over here, but eh, whatever. But that's just only one little appetizer. We've got loads of other things, which actually we'll need to get into here. Now, I did show this last time, but I want to show it again. We've got a brand new animation, which is... The, car the Spinosaurus's new animations. Ooh, we get it. And we're doing it with a Carcharodontosaurus this time. A natural enemy of the Spinosaurus. Oh, 
Ah, uh, with its awesome JPOG roar, it couldn't be better. And we're going to get rid of its fish, because we will want to see them fight. Alright, that actually was quite quick. Oh god, we got a glitch in the capture mode again. Alright, let's try this again. So, Spinosaurus does have a new f animation. Oh, oh wow, we might get it already. Oh, yep. Oh, what a snap of the neck. That's right, the Spinosaurus has gotten its Jurassic Park 3 T-Rex kill animation. And as you can see from right there, it's not just for T-Rex, it's for all large carnivores, I believe. Which is nice, because it kind of had the... I'm pretty sure it had the same animation as Indominus Rex for killing um, large carnivores, but it didn't really work for it and such, and the rigging just didn't work because of, like, its different, like, body shape, I guess. And this one, even though, well, it doesn't really work in real life because, well, it's trying to use its hands, but it has no thumbs to push to properly hold onto a neck, so ignore that. But Spinosaurus has one more little trick to show us, and that's its new um, hatchery animation. Because it used to just, like, simply walk out and just be like, hey, I'm here, I'm big, I'm awesome, look at me go. Now, it's got its own presence. Let's take a look-see. Like the Spinosaurus it is, it runs out, plants its forelimbs to the ground, and screams, I am here. I am the Spinosaurus, and I am going to tear stuff up. We've got a few more things to show, which we'll show the stuff that's in the map first, and then we'll show the stuff um, somewhere else, which we'll start with probably one that has set up what's going to be the next live stream series when I'm, you know, able to, which is the Demolisher. Because one of the best things about this game is that, like, a lot of stuff could get damaged. But unfortunately, you couldn't really use it afterwards. But with this, I can make everything look like it's been through the storm of the century, Jurassic World has been torn apart, and stuff is going to madness. Like, for example, this aviary. It's got some holes in it now, but as you can see, it is still operational. And from the forums and such, apparently, even stuff that's damaged still works, which means that, like, these, um, uh, however you say, these little bats of doom won't break out. Or even a Quetzalcoatlus. But, you know, if they wanted to, they'd just make new holes and such. But that's just about it. And you can do this for literally everything. So, for example, let's just say I um, want to have the Visitor Center, or the Innovation Center, actually. Let's just put it right here. I have a fancy main street. I, I won't build one, because that'll take some time. But... I want to make it look demolished and stuff. Say I want to make like a nice little short of like Jurassic World destroyed. Kaboom! I've got it already set up. Now obviously it's going, uh, sir, there's no path connecting to it. It's useless. But, you know, it looks really nice. I do wish that like for some of these they look much more demolished. Like for the Innovation Center, it should look torn to hell and such. And I do hope that we do get, like, a foliage brush for, like, buildings and stuff. So, like, we could give them the Fallen Kingdom aesthetic. Because, like, that would just look rad as heck. But this is a start. Just nice demolished. And I like how everything's, like, pouring out smoke. It's like, you've been, like, you do, like, a little short. It's been five years since Jurassic World worked. Uh, how the hell is it? Everything's still on fire, Bob. I don't know. This is cinematic at its finest. Oh, wow. Spinosaurus are fighting kids these days. Will they kill each other the same way? I wonder. Let's see. It'd be interesting if they kill each other a different way. Oh, nope. It was just like a love bite. Well, whatever. But, like... Yeah, look at this. Everything is demolished. It's madness. It's awesome. But, I think there's one more thing that I have to show, but it's in the hatcheries. But say we go to, um, T-Rex. Oh, nope, not... I want to edit it first. This is a new thing regarding the skins, 
But if you look over here, you can see a new random section, random favorite per egg. Now this is for anyone who goes into the species viewer and is like, okay, that's what this skin looks like. I want to use it for this park. But then you get into the game and you forgot to screenshot it or, you know, write it down. And then you're like, uh, what the heck was it again? Then you go back and then you do it again. But then you forget again. And I'm totally not talking about myself because that would never happen with me. I promise I'm a professional dino gamer. <laughs> Ugh. Yes, it does happen to me, but they've made a solution, which is favoriting skin. So say, for example, I really like this um, mangrove forest skin, um, and I love putting it with the Pulcherana. What I can do is now favorite them. And I can do this for others as well. So say I want a green T-Rex as well. I just favorite it as well and say... Uh, I don't know, uh, lithobates, it's speaking to me. There you go. And then, if I want to randomize my favorites, so like, say I've got like six favorite skins, then it'll be like, okay, so you want to stick with these like skin selections, don't want to risk having a really, really ugly skin, not a problem. We'll randomize it with your favorites, so you'll be all good. And then you set it for that, set it for this, and then when it hatches, it'll give me only those that I have favorited. And you can do this for all the dinosaurs, all the pterosaurs, and everything in between. And I think for the majority of like the main things for the... Oh wait, no, there's one more thing. It's regarding challenge mode, which means we're going to have to get out of this map. So say goodbye until we build it into something new. Tootaloo! Alrighty folks, we are back and now let's look at challenge mode because it's got some new treats for us. Now of course, you've got the whole usual stick down here that has been, well, constantly updated. And as you can see, I haven't really done much for um, these maps yet, but I mean, I did hard difficulty in Southwest. I think I'm a pro now, but you know, I'll, I'll get these skins, guys, I promise. Wait, I didn't do can- Oh, right, I did that on my PS4. Never mind. I was like, yes, I did. I did Canada, you liar. But nope. Uh, now I figured out why I don't have some of the skins. But anyway, these were of older times. But now we've got custom challenge mode, which gives quite the, um, well, I guess for those who love doing challenge mode, quite the lovely surprise. Because not only does it make it interesting for you, no, it also makes it interesting for those who you know who also play the game. And you want to, well, challenge them to a challenge mode. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Because if you look at the right, at the bottom left corner, not right, you'll see a share code, which that code is actually just for, you know, for if you're doing this with a friend. So say, for example, I want to do one with um, a friend and we're wanting to make it the exact same. Like, say, we can only use this amount of dinosaurs in the park and we can only use this, that, or we don't want diseases, or so on and so forth. And it gives us all of that. So basic settings. Default levels, square levels, expanded levels, which I'm not sure what expanded levels are, but I'll have to... What are... Oh, wait. Hold on. Are the expanded levels the ones that... Oh, wait, I remember what expanded levels are. They're like when they were in the campaigns and such, and you got more um, space. So, like, for example... Um, for San Diego, it started for the challenge for the chaos theory. You started with one section, and after a little bit, you got to buy more space and such. I remember that's what the expanded levels are. I was like, what are they? I'm not sure what the Southwest is because, like, I don't know um, that one off by heart. But maybe I'll check it out or something. Difficulty, you can set it as high as you want. You could set it all the way to Jurassic or easy. Also. It's kind of scary when you see that, um, without changing anything else right now, Jurassic difficulty is only at 
917 rating for, like, this map and such. It's kind of scary, not gonna lie, but, like, what if it were different? Oh, nope, it'd be the same for all these maps. Yikes. But you can do Expanded, Default, and Square Level, though, which, not too shabby and such. And then you can do, like, what kind of guests and such you want, buildings, all. You can make it more difficult, more easy, which, thank God you can have all buildings, because that'd be fun. Objectives, you can do, like, of course you can do the all five stars, which I think that's always the case. Unlock all species, um, reach target and such. You can set up all different things. So if you just want it to be like, yeah, five stars, there you go. Then, like, dinosaurs, you can set, like, the same things in the sandbox. So egg failures and all that. So, like, off, on and such. Disease, no disease and all that. All of this can be changed as well. Same with their behaviors, which one of the things I have not checked out is, like, some of their... Oh, right, new trait. Dinosaur Intelligent, which this trait is only for, like, Chaos Theory and such, and also for challenge mode. It has no use in, like, sandbox mode unless you're having your dinosaurs break out and you set them to having their needs met. But this boosts their appeal and such, and, um, it increases the level of escape likelihood, which is very, very, very nice. And then, you know, so on and so forth. Oh, wait. Why are dinosaurs? Oh, this one's a good one. This one you can do for all the maps because... This was one thing that made challenge mode a little bit easier for some of the more difficult maps because they had loads of wild dinosaurs. Like, for example, Canada actually had a free Brachiosaurus to collect, which, for me, when I tried Jurassic difficulty, I forgot about, so I didn't make money at all and failed in, like, 20 minutes. But anyway, moving on, you can also do gameplay controls and such, so, like, Sabotage risks, you can turn that off, as it already is. Hiring requirements, salary, you could turn that down to all the way to easy. Thank God, because they are expensive little buggers. Scientists and such, you can turn them off. Park and such, environment. It's, it's got it all. You got everything you can. And it, it makes challenge mode more inviting, really, because... Like, these ones are fine and such. Like, I enjoy challenge mode for the most part, even though, uh, as you can see from my awards, I don't do it that much. I still do enjoy it, so... But this does give it to people who, I guess, are less um, challenge, mode, challenge mode enthusiastic. It gives them more opportunity to try out new things. Like, maybe with a friend or something, just, you know, to race or something to five stars. Just, you know... It gives more options, which is what this game's supposed to be. It's what makes challenge mode unique. Because sandbox, like, yeah, sandbox is great, but sometimes you want that thrill. You want that struggle, and sometimes... Because sometimes it just makes it worth it, because you're like, yeah, I did it. And then when you get there, then you feel a real success. Whereas for sandbox, well, you can just make it five stars by just easily doing it in, like, 20 minutes. But that's just me. And also, I realized there was one more thing that I had to show you, and we need to go back. Well, actually, no, we can go into settings for this. Oh, wait, no, we need to go into sandbox settings, so let's go back. Alan, why'd you turn off the fan? All right, we're back here, but I'm going to open the gate because we forgot to do something. And we got T-Rexes. Well, they're two T-Rexes, so let's just release them. But, as you can see, a dinosaur threat has emerged. Now we're going to just uh, wait a few moments to uh, see what happens when they, you know, get out. Come on, turn to your right. Ah, uh, out of Spino. Now, realistically, everyone... Ah, uh, there we go, that didn't last long. Everyone should be crapping their pants off right now. Well... I am God, and therefore, I can change the rules. Here it is. Dinosaur behavior. It's at the top. Dinosaur danger to guess. Right now, it's on, which is why everyone's crapping their pants at the sight of a Spinosaurus just walking down, down the street. But, if I change it to off, 
everything is happy. Now, as you can see, it automatically shuts off escapes and also dinosaur vehicle aggression. So, that makes everything A-OK. -okay. So, if we go back in, they should stop running in, like, a well... They actually won't, but if you see how close he is to these guys, like, he is perfectly fine with them. And also, that's just looking real badass. Hold on, let's get into capture mode on that. Yeah, that just looks cool. Look at the sun rays on him. Bless him, he is gorgeous. But yeah, like, oh wow, there, she's, maybe the reason he's walking off is because he knows not to mess with this girl, because, uh, judging from that face... That hand through the chest does not tickle exactly, which, that's the real horror story. Hold on, this is the new short, Spinosaurus, ultimate predator of time and such, is not gonna mess with this lady, because she's kind of stabbing her friend right in the chest. You have anything to say about it, sir? Huh. Well, I thought he would, but anyway, Spinosaurus is like, I ain't messing with that, I'm gonna go and find myself a bird. Anyone, or even a fish burger. Anyone know the best burger shop around here? No? Alright, fine. Bye. See ya. <laughs> I've lost it, guys. I'm nuts. And now they're back to going as normal. Oh, she just stabbed him again. Gee, oh my god. She's like, look at me. I'm amazing. Lady? Oh, wow. He's just nearly punching her in the face. <laughs> All the things to be excited about, and I'm mesmerized by these two yahoos. Well... I guess when it's love at first sight, they gotta, you just gotta respect it. But, uh, let's get out of capture mode. But, as you could see, they were, well, perfectly chill with a Spinosaurus that, you know, loves to attack people. Um, well, it wasn't attacking them. And, even though, like, it did show one of these guys was, like, causing a rampage, they're not showing that anymore. And they won't. They will literally not kill anybody. But, if we go back into sandbox settings... Oh, I got the hiccups. And say I want to do it on carnivores only. This means that all the carnivores will still attack people, but you can still have herbivores. So say if you want to do your little petting zoo and such, or like you want to do like a... One of those like um nature enclosures like at zoos where you can walk through the environment and like the animals are going around and such, and they're not bothering you, you're not bothering them. And it's perfectly fine. You can do that. And also as a bonus for like any Calgarians who know that at the Calgary Zoo they love to let their peacocks walk around everywhere. If you want a homalocephalae walking all over your park, you can do that. And it's just, you know, a pretty cool thing. And also it looks like some of the galleys might make their way out. Uh, well, for their sake I hope so. Because, well... While they do, they do move like birds, but the Spino's going to kill you guys. Get out of there. But that is the end of the uh, free update showcase. Not too much. I think there was a few things that I missed, but I can't remember them right now. And also, I really got to get out of this room. It is, oh, wow. Spinosaurus is already going for someone. Let's take a look. See, who's he going to get? Oh. Well, he doesn't have a new animation with them, but I guess that's okay. Each their own. But, if you enjoyed this video, guys, I do appreciate the like. And also, remember, guys, for the um, Patreon, do go and support that if you wish. And until the next video, guys, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.